Here is an equation that looks almost trivial, but solving it will take us on a journey that reveals a stunning connection between algebra, geometry, and even the nature of beauty itself. First, we rearrange it. We are looking for numbers that, when raised to the fifth power, give us one. These are the fifth roots of unity. Now, of course, x equals one is an obvious solution, but a fifth degree polynomial must have five solutions. Where are the other four? To find them, we will embark on two independent journeys, one through the visual world of geometry and one through the symbolic world of pure algebra. Our first approach is to visualize the problem in the complex plane. Let's quickly recall Euler's beautiful formula, which connects exponentials to trigonometry. This will be our key tool. Think of complex numbers as rotations. Each number, e to the i theta, represents a rotation by angle theta around the unit circle. We start by representing our unknown x in its polar form, where r is the distance from the origin and theta is the angle. Substituting this into our equation, we get this exponential form. This expands to r to the fifth times e to the i five theta equals one times e to the i zero. But wait, the number one can be written in infinitely many ways in the complex plane. We need the most general form. Since e to the i 2 pi equals 1, we can add any integer multiple of 2 pi to the exponent. This gives us the most general form of the number 1. For these two complex numbers to be equal, two conditions must be met. Their magnitudes must be equal, and their arguments must be equal. This gives us two separate equations to solve. The first equation forces the radius to be 1, since the fifth root of 1 is 1. The second equation gives us the formula for our five distinct angles. For k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, we get five distinct angles. Converting to degrees, we see the roots are evenly spaced every 72 degrees around the unit circle. These two conditions combine to give us our single, elegant formula for the five roots. Let's write out all five roots explicitly to see the pattern. Converting to degrees in rectangular form, we see each root is separated by exactly 72 degrees around the unit circle. Now comes the moment of truth. Let's verify one of these solutions by plugging it back into our original equation. Perfect. The second root, when raised to the fifth power, gives us e to the i 2 pi, which equals 1. Our algebra is correct. And when we plot them, they form a perfect regular pentagon. Pentagons are famous in geometry for hiding a very special number. Let's see if it emerges here too. That was elegant! But a true mathematician is never satisfied with just one path to the truth. Can we find these roots with raw algebra alone, without pictures or angles? Let's find out! Let's return to the beginning and see if we can solve this without any pictures or polar coordinates. We start again with our original equation. This expression is a difference of fifth powers. There's a well-known factorization formula for such expressions. The general formula for factoring a to the n minus b to the n involves this pattern. Applying this to our case with a equals x and b equals 1, we get this factorization. Setting this equal to 0, we can find all solutions. The first factor gives us x equals 1, which we already knew. But our four missing roots are the solutions to this fourth degree polynomial. Notice something beautiful about its structure. The coefficients are perfectly symmetric, one for each term. This symmetry is a deep hint of a hidden structure we can exploit. Think back to the pentagon. The four complex roots have a special property. They come in conjugate pairs. But there's something even more remarkable. For any root omega on the unit circle, its reciprocal, 1 over omega, is also a root. This is because all our roots have magnitude 1. 
When the magnitude of omega is 1, the reciprocal equals the complex conjugate. So our roots come in reciprocal pairs. A polynomial whose roots must come in these reciprocal pairs is called a reciprocal equation. And it is forced by this property to have this beautiful symmetric structure. So the symmetry we see in the algebra is not a random trick. It is a direct echo of the symmetry we saw in the geometry. And now we will use that very symmetry to crack it wide open. Let's focus on solving this quartic equation. The key insight is to use the reciprocal symmetry. Notice that x to the fourth and x are reciprocals when we divide by x squared. Similarly for x cubed and x squared. Let's divide the entire equation by x squared. Since none of our roots are zero, this is valid. This gives us an equation with reciprocal terms clearly visible. Now we can group the reciprocal pairs. x squared and one over x squared go together. And x and one over x go together. Regrouping the terms this way reveals the structure we need. Here comes the key substitution. Let y equal x plus 1 over x. This captures the reciprocal symmetry we just identified. Why does this substitution work? The key insight is that our polynomial has palindromic coefficients, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. This symmetry forces the roots to come in reciprocal pairs. Why does this work? because y captures the essential symmetry of our reciprocal equation. When we square y, we get x squared plus 2 plus 1 over x squared. Rearranging, we find that x squared plus 1 over x squared equals y squared minus 2. Substituting back into our grouped equation, we get this. Simplifying, our quartic has collapsed into this simple quadratic in y. This is the power of the reciprocal substitution. The quadratic formula gives us two values for y. These numbers will govern our complex roots. Let's call them y1 and y2. But remember, y equals x plus 1 over x, so we still need to find the actual x values. Let's verify our golden ratio connection by substituting back into our quadratic equation. Perfect! The algebra confirms our solution is correct. Multiplying through by x and rearranging, we get a quadratic equation in x for each value of y. The quadratic formula gives us this expression. Each y value will produce two x values, giving us our four complex roots. This completes our algebraic journey. We found the same roots through pure symbol manipulation. But now, let's investigate something that seems completely unrelated. For centuries, mathematicians have been fascinated by a particular number, born from a very simple equation. The positive solution to this quadratic is known as the golden ratio, or phi. Notice how similar this equation is to the one we just solved for y. Compare the coefficients. 1, negative 1, negative 1. Our y equation had coefficients 1, 1, negative 1. They're closely related. The value of phi is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And because phi is a solution, it must satisfy its own defining equation. These decimal approximations will help us recognize the pattern when we connect back to our geometric roots. From the defining equation, phi squared equals phi plus 1. This is the fundamental property of the golden ratio. Dividing both sides by phi, we get that phi equals 1 plus 1 over phi. This reveals a beautiful reciprocal relationship. Rearranging, we find that 1 over phi equals phi minus 1. Let's calculate this value step by step. 1 over phi equals the square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. So 1 over phi equals the square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. Now, wait a minute. That number, wait, we have seen that exact expression before. Rewriting y1 by changing the order of terms reveals the connection clearly. The algebraic structure of our fifth roots is governed by the golden ratio. This isn't a coincidence. It's the heart 
of the discovery. But what about the other solution? The positive solution, y1, is exactly the reciprocal of the golden ratio. Now for its counterpart. Our second solution was negative 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. This is precisely negative phi. The two algebraic constants are not random numbers. They are 1 over phi and negative phi. The entire algebraic structure is governed by the golden ratio. But how does this connect back to our geometric picture? Two completely different approaches, yet they reveal the same profound truth. Now let's see the magic that connects them. Here's the bridge. For any point on the unit circle, x equals e to the i theta, and the sum x plus 1 over x equals 2 times the cosine of theta, this comes from Euler's formula. Since x plus 1 over x is our substitution variable y, we have the connection. So y equals 2 times the cosine of the angle. This connects our algebra back to the geometry. This means 2 times the cosine of 72 degrees is the reciprocal of the golden ratio. And 2 times the cosine of 144 degrees is negative phi. The symmetry is absolute. And so we're left with a conclusion that is far more profound than just five numbers. A simple algebraic statement about the number 1 contains within it the perfect geometry of the pentagon whose dimensions are governed by the golden ratio, a number synonymous with beauty itself. But wait, there is one more surprise hiding in plain sight. We found the golden ratio buried deep within the algebra of the roots, but it was also hiding in plain sight all along in the very shape we created. Consider the regular pentagon formed by our roots. Let's examine the ratio of a diagonal length to a side length. Using our calculated coordinates, the diagonal length is approximately 1.902 and the side length is approximately 1.176. The ratio is approximately 1.618. Exactly the golden ratio. The geometry confirms our algebra. That ratio is exactly the golden ratio a fact that can be proven using the very trigonometric identities we derived. Advanced students might wonder, why can we solve this with quadratics? The answer lies in Galois theory. The symmetries of our roots form a cyclic group of order 4, which is solvable. Gauss proved that regular polygons can be constructed with compass and straight edge if and only if they have a prime number of sides of the form 2 to the power of 2 to the n plus 1. The pentagon with five sides, barely makes this list. The algebraic constant that governs the location of the vertices is the same geometric constant that defines the proportions of the shape they create. The numbers are the shape, the shape is the numbers. The unity is not just beautiful, it is perfect. Thank you for joining me on this journey through a seemingly simple equation that revealed its true complexity. Remember, mathematics is not just about numbers, it's about finding patterns and connections. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more mathematical explorations.